Hello, welcome to this lesson in engineering mechanics. Here we're going to discuss something called the principle of moments, which is also called Vargonon's theorem. Uh, so in your book you might see it as principle of moments, or you might also see it discussed simply as Vargonon's theorem. Now actually, I've actually taught you the principle of moments, or Vargonon's theorem, actually during the course of this, uh, of this uh, course so far. I just haven't called it that. But since you have a section in your book that's titled that, I want to go ahead and formalize it, show you exactly what we mean, and then work just a couple of quick problems. But basically you already know what it is. Now, how do you spell this guy? This is how you spell it. Var Ignon Theorem. I'm sure I'm mangling that when I try to say it out loud, so I'm just going to prefer to call it the principle of moments. I could write it down, okay, but it's very simple to understand, so I'll just verbalize it for you. The principle of moments says that the moment of a force is the sum of the moments produced by the components of the force. Okay, by the components of the force. I'll say it again. The moment of a force produced about some point is just the sum of the moments that are produced. If you take that force and decompose it into its component forces and look at the moments produced by those. So the sum of the for, uh, the, sum, the moment of a force is the sum of the moments produced by the components of the force. Now I've actually used that several times already to help you uh, solve problems, to teach you how to solve problems. Because when you start getting into math, you're dealing with vectors and decomposition of vectors, it's natural for you to think of it in terms of components. And it makes total sense. If the components of the force can vectorially be added together to give you the original force, then they're equivalent mathematically. So whether or not you're working with a single force or two vector forces that form the components, they're exactly equivalent. So it makes sense that the principle of moments is true. Um, we just haven't actually formalized it like that. So to kind of solidify it just a little bit more, I want to draw a quick picture to, to show you what I'm talking about. So for instance, let's just say, this isn't going to be really a problem as much as it'll, as it'll be a, a, a little uh, proof. Let's say we have some uh, point of origin O. And so we're going to end up applying a force through some moment arm there. And the moment arm that we have here in this case, we're calling it R. So it extends from the point of rotation there. And then at the tip of R, I'll go ahead and switch colors for that. So this could be a metal beam or a piece of wood that's this long, pointed in this direction from the tip of the arrow here. And right at the end of the board, or whatever you're, you're thinking about, you have some force uh, we call it F. So they're both vectors. Here's R vector, here's F vector. The F vector is applied at the tip of this vector R, which is given by the drawing, uh, oriented like that. Now without thinking about it, you know that if this is a rigid beam and if this is nailed into the wall, if I apply a force, even though it's at an angle like this, it's still going to tend to rotate the thing uh, in general like this. But and, and in fact, if I asked you to calculate the moment without using any components or anything, I mean, you certainly could do that. Basically, what you need to do is figure out the component of the force acting uh, perpendicular to, uh, to this guy uh, or to the, uh, the moment arm there. So you could, if you could somehow mathematically calculate, okay, this is the vector here. If I only wanted to figure out what the component of it was that's acting perpendicular to this, this perpendicular component would be uh, the part that spins it around. Alternatively, we've talked about the fact that you could use the full-blown force and find the perpendicular distance to the line of action. So this force line of action is going like this. So if I draw a dotted line this way, here is the line of action. The perpendicular moment arm to the line of action would be the 